Hey guys, what's up? It's John here again today from Toxic Spikes, and I'm bringing you another Pokemon narrated Wi-Fi battle. This was with a guy named um, Adrock. I, I'll add his channel in the description below. He's a really good guy. Uh, yeah, really cool guy. Go check him out. Um, I mean, look, he's got an Invader Zim theme team, so you know he's a cool guy. Anyways, um, this is just a really random team I threw together. Um, go out to my Scarf Mamoswine here, predicting the Thunder move. Really risky, actually, because he could have gone for the Water move and probably one-shotted me. Anyways, um, realize I don't want to get burned or anything like that, and so I switch out to my Mr. Mime, and I do take a... Will o -Wisp, which sucks, but then I go for the teeter dance because I am faster. And in case you haven't guessed, this is a teeter dance thunder wave Mr. Mime. And um, it is the most gimmicky thing like ever, and it kind of sucks. So I'm not going to really be using this like ever again. Well, I might. You know, I bet you I'm going to use this like 50 videos from now, and one of you guys is just going to be like, oh my god, you said you'd never use him again. Anyways, he goes out to his Torterra. I, I really thought that was going to happen, but I was like, you know what, I'm not going to tear dance again on the off chance he stays in. So, go out to my Zapdos. Unless he's got the Stone Edge, there's nothing this Torterra can touch me with. Wood Hammer and Earthquake do... Well, Earthquake does nothing, and Wood Hammer does next to nothing. And uh, I'm just going to go for the Hidden Power Ice. Be safe. I don't want to overplay things this early in the match. That was pretty risky of him, because I could have had the Hidden Power Grass, you know? You never know. Um, I find Hidden Power Ice a little more advantageous, because, I mean, Hidden Power Grass is great for when they have, like, those Swamperts in and stuff, but... Since Swampert usage has really declined in this gen, well, you know, people still use it, but I just do not see as much. Like, you used to, you used to see Swampert leads all the time in 4th gen. It's like, you never really see that these days. Um, I just don't think they're as great as they used to be, that's the thing. But, uh, I'm not gonna get into the, uh, you know, I could talk about the metagame for hours, but I, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. I'm here to narrate this battle. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I live that Hydro Bump with more than half, and so I'm like, I can just keep T-Bolting and Roosting, but he packs the Thunder Wave. So, this is an interesting, original, double status Rotom W. Probably not, well, I don't know, maybe it's a smoke on set, probably a little bit of a variation, and, um... He's going to go out to his Torterra as I go for the Thunderbolt. Obviously, that's not going to affect him. So This Torterra is not a problem at all right now, though, because my Zapdos has Hidden Power Ice. Right here, I could have gone for the Hidden Power Ice, but I roosted. Either way, it didn't really affect the outcome of the battle. Um, Yeah, but what I was saying is uh, this, this Torterra, I'm not worried about at all. My Zapdos has Hidden Power Ice. My Mamoswine has Icicle Drop or um, Ice Shard. My Gengar has Icy Wind. My Sharpedo has Ice Beam. So, you know, like, this obviously isn't going to be a big deal. Go for the Heat Wave. I miss. So, up until this point in the battle, I've been having some horrible luck. I mean, miss the Heat Wave, and you're going to see in a minute, I do do some... I, I get some other bad luck. Go out to Mr. Mime, because I figure he's useless at this point, and I'm just going to fodder him out. Um, Yeah, because, you know, he's a Mr. Mime. I mean, he doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> And at least I get some nice recoil damage on him, especially with Life Orb. And I go out to my Sharpedo here. Now, I could have just been really bold here and just straight on attacked him with Hydro Pump. But, you know, too many people do that with the Sharpedos because people switch predict predicting the Protect. This guy just stayed in and close combated me. And I, it's a good thing I remember, too. I was like, wait a minute. This guy gets Wild Bolt and close combat. I better, better protect. So I did. And then he goes out to uh, that thing, the... The sarcophagus looking thing and I hydro pumped and I missed and a hydro pump crunch I am almost certain it would have two hit KO'd so that is awful luck for me so now I go out to my Ampharos for literally no reason at all if this guy was a nasty plot sarcophagus guy I would have been wrecked but fortunately it's a bulky one and I get a free sub because he switches out uh, I'm assuming he couldn't really do anything to me even though he probably could have out stalled me or something now he's going to go right back out to his Rotom W, and I'm just going to go for the Focus Punch. Now, I'm fully aware that two T-Bolts would have uh, two hit KO'd this thing at this point, but, I mean, Focus Punch just looks so much cooler, and, uh, you know, so he gets hit with a Focus Punch to the dome, and, um, yeah, I know, I, I like ripping phrases off of other battlers, but no. In all seriousness, he does miss that Hydro Pump the turn before, which kind of makes up for the Hydro Pump I missed. Now I'm going to be able to get off a Thunderbolt, and yeah, so things are looking pretty good right now. Although, I'm not really, like, too concerned about um, Ampharos getting hit with Hydro Pumps because he does have pretty good special defense. Now, this is a key point. 
I predicted him to probably, well, I thought, like, you know, I better stay in. I don't have anything to take fighting moves and stuff, except maybe Gengar, but what if it's a Zorark? It is a Zorark. So I got to hit him with the, um, Stab Thunderbolt with, I think, max special attack and a modest nature. So obviously Zorark's not going to live that. And Ampharos is a beast. Up until this point, I was playing pretty bad, and then Ampharos kind of just got me into the battle again. Um, I'm just going to fire out here. I was hoping I could live one Flare Blitz. Uh, yeah, Flare Blitz. I said that right. Why'd I go? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that just kind of shows that Arcanine's actually a very prominent attacker and a uh, very prominent threat. Uh, I gotta keep him, keep that in mind. I've always used bulky Arcanines, and I never use the offensive variants, but in this generation, he's really stepped it up a notch, because he got both close combat and wild bolt, so a combination of wild bolt, close combat, you know, um, flare blitz and extreme speed. He is a deadly life orb attacker. Anyways, all my Mammoth Swine did there was Earthquake, and then I went out to my Gengar. Now, I have no idea how Destiny Bond works, because I'm stupid. And, um, I thought that you had to use it before they took you out, like, that turn. But apparently, if you use it at the end of the turn before, it'll also take you down. And this was key for him, because he said that if he did not take out that Gengar, that Gengar would have swept his team. So now, that kind of puts me at a bit of a disadvantage, but I'm, at the same time, glad I got rid of that mummy dude because he would have been a big threat now here's where scarf mammoth swine shows how much of a boss he is he stays in with kajondo thinking that i'm banded and that an ice shard will be my best bet and that it won't kill him but since i'm scarfed i outspeed an earthquake for the kill he's going out to this thing and you know i know he'll probably switch out to torterra but just in case he bluffs the switch and stays in i'm gonna go for the earthquake anyways and plus it's free damage you know not much more than stealth rock damage right there but um Whatever, Mammoth Swine's still awesome, and I mean, he's got an awesome back sprite and everything. Anyways, I go back out to Zapdos here, again, walling his Torterra, and he's gonna go for the Wood Hammer, and look how pathetic that is. Nothing. Ha ha ha. And right here, I think I might just go for the... Do I go... No, um, right here I actually go for the, um, Roost, I believe, because I predict him to switch out again. Ah, sorry. And, um, I know this is all plugged up. Uh, hate it when that happens. But, um, yeah, he goes out to his Arcanine. He kind of knows it's over at this point because, um, all he's got left is Arcanine and Torterra. I believe that's it. And both of them get demolished by Sharpedo. So, um, there's really nothing he can do at this point. He's going to close combat me. And that doesn't do crap, really. But he can't Flare Blitz because Flare Blitz will probably kill himself with Recoil. And it's pretty funny here because I do get the para hacks, and um, but that doesn't affect anything at all. Now he's gonna go for the flare blitz again. Obviously, he takes himself out with recoil and life orb damage, and um, doesn't even take down like that's like what a four hit KO on his Aptos at full health, of course. But I go for the thunderbolt. Should have gone for the roost, but eh, stuff happens. Um, he's gonna go out to his Torterra now. Pretty much Torterra's last stand here. Um, and he goes for the wood hammer. That's pretty much all I can do at this point. And this is what really threw me off here. Um, I go for the hidden power ice. And that's four times effective. And it did not kill. So either it's just the fact that my Zapdos has little to no special attack investment and EVs. Or that Torterra is just pretty beastly. I'm thinking it's a little bit of both. But, um, anyways, yeah. It's pretty much a good game at this point. Because he can't use another wood hammer. Because he would kill himself with recoil. So he has to leech seed. I'm not going to get paralyzed. Hidden Power Ice ends the game. So that's a good game. Uh, Ad Rock, really cool guy. Um, I've known him for actually a little while now. We've had a couple battles before. I believe we're like 1 and 1 or 2 and 2, something like that. But um, anyways, go check his channel out. And uh, that's another thing. This He got a battle with me. Well, this battle was on Abra's Asylum. So that's kind of... Well, he, his battles with me have all been on Abra's Asylum and Skype. He added me on Skype, and he, um, I saw him on Abra's Asylum. So, I mean, that's a hint, hint. If you want to battle with me, I'm going to be there at Abra's Asylum, or I'm going to be on um, Skype. So just add me on Skype. My Skype is on my channel. Or um, go on Abra's Asylum, zat.com, slash AAX. It's a chat group, and those are the two places you can challenge me. And um, I know I've said this before, but I, I used to promote this a lot way back in the day, like when I was starting up. And, like, I haven't really said it, and I've got a lot of subscribers recently, especially with my PMP beta upload, that brought in a lot of new subs, and so I didn't really tell anybody, like, you know, I, 
about, I didn't really tell people, like, you know, I, I've told them, of course, I don't accept YouTube PM challenges or, like, comment challenges, but I told them, uh, I never told them about my Skype, really. So, yeah, go at me on Skype if you want to battle with me, and, uh, anyways, that leads me to my question of the day. Um, my question of the day is, what is your favorite Pokemon to throw people off with? Obviously, mine's my Scarf Mamo. This thing catches people off guard all the time, because you only see the Life Orb and Choice Banded vari variants, like, 90% of the time. And then you bring in a Scarf Mamo, and it's like, whoa, you know? Like, it just it throws people off so much. And it uh, gets me a lot of surprise KOs. It's one of those original things, like a semi-original thing, but it actually works. Like, people have original sets, like, oh, why don't I try a sub-punching Snorlax? But it's like, this is one of those that's actually really effective. Um, Not to say that you can't use a sub-punching Snorlax, but I mean, obviously that's not going to be your best bet when you're using Snorlax. You know, curse lax all the way. But um, anyways... That's my vid for today, guys. Uh, rate, comment, sub, and uh, yeah, see you next time. Peace.